Lecture 4-3, seafloor spreading. Continental drift was suggested by Alfred Wagner, and he suggested that the crust moves. Now, various types of evidence support this, but seafloor spreading really showed the movement of the surface of the Earth. Now, before really World War II, we didn't have a great understanding of what the surface of the ocean floor looked like. Once World War II came around, we developed some technologies like sonar, which allowed us then to echo sound the bottom of the ocean floor, which pretty much meant sending sound waves to the bottom, letting them reflect back, and telling us, giving us a picture of what the ocean floor looked like. So echo sounding of the ocean floor indicated a mountain range underwater stretching from Iceland to the Red Sea. The chain is 74,000 kilometers long. This is a deep valley in the middle known as Rift. We found high points, low points, we found all these different things, and we started studying them. And we noticed that in this rift, there was new rock material being formed. Far away from this rift, at what we call a trench, there was material being subducted, pushed back under, down to the mantle. Well, the seafloor was moving, it was changing. So this is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, you can see North America, South America on the left side. You can see Africa and Europe on the right side. Uh, but the Mid-Atlantic Ridge runs from north to south, and it does a lot of... You can see it runs the whole way down here. And that ridge is actually where we have the separation of the sea floor occurring. And it's spreading apart. It's getting farther and farther away. Uh, on the other side of the U.S., we actually have subduction trenches. So you actually, this is moving to the left, this side is moving to the right, and new materials forming in the middle. Now, seafloor spreading basically states a hot mantle material rises up at the ridges on the seafloor. The material pushes away the old material and forms new rocks. So new stuff is forming in the middle. The ocean floor gets subducted. That means it gets pushed under at trenches. That's an important word to know. It gets pushed deep under until it forms part of the mantle again. Now, the funny thing is that as the material, which forms deep below, so again, we have kind of a little, this is our ridge here. This is where it's separating because this side's moving that way, this side's moving that way, and new material is coming up to form the ocean floor. At a later point, this is very far away now, we actually get what's called subduction, where this is still getting pushed under. Uh, this is still getting pushed under here uh, as it meets this. These two are heading, and so this material can eventually come and become the new material. So this is kind of a recycling project for the Earth. Temperature on the rift, 20 degrees warmer than the rest of the ocean floor, which indicates thermal energy is being released from inside the Earth. We actually have a string of underwater volcanoes at this location. The youngest rocks are on the ocean floor are located at the rift while the oldest rocks are at the edges of the oceans and since these oldest rocks are eventually going to get pushed under uh, rocks on the ocean floor don't get very old compared to rocks on the surface of the earth on the land rocks on the land are a lot older than the rocks on the ocean floor because the ocean floor is constantly getting subducted So this is a big diagram of sea floor spreading. Uh, you can see that this is the ridge right here in the center. And you see that they're separating here. And so new material comes up from below, from the mantle. And it's going to form new rocks in that area. Far away from that we get a trench. is where subduction get, takes place, where one layer gets pushed underneath the other. Now if you remember when we are talking about the layers of the earth, continental crust is less dense than oceanic crust. And so the oceanic crust is denser, it's going to get pushed under, and it's going to be pushed down there. Now at a subduction point where one's getting pushed under, you can actually get a lot of mountains forming here, you get volcanoes, <coughs> and you do get some form of volcanoes in the middle ocean ridge too. So the ocean floor is in constant motion. And getting a good picture of it to measuring things, that actually has given us a lot of information. Now evidence for sea floor spraying besides being able to measure a lot of things like the age of rocks, temperatures, and motion, there's something called C4 magnetism. As that new material gets pushed up, as the magma comes up from deep underground and forms rocks, 
there's stuff in the rocks that are magnetic. It's iron. There's iron in the rocks that is magnetic, and it gets pretty much, it lines up with the Earth's magnetic field. Now, we know we have a magnetic north, a magnetic south. You take a compass, it lines up into that field, and so it always points north. Well, so does the iron kind of in a rock sample that forms. As it cools, the iron lines up with the magnetic north. Now, we've looked at rocks on the ocean floor in the past, and we can actually analyze them and see which way north was at the time they formed. And we find that there was a flip where sometimes north was what we would call south, and then it flipped to the other side, and then it flipped again. So occasionally, the Earth's magnetic field flips. It's a natural process. It's happened many times before. We're not really sure exactly what happens when that does occur, uh, how it impacts life on Earth. But there's this kind of striping effect, not a color striping, but a magnetic striping effect, where if we analyze the rocks on the ocean floor, we notice that they flip every so often. Uh, it could be something like every 100,000 years or so. And so we see that when it flips, we can tell the rocks are getting farther apart from where they formed. Uh, the rock is already formed. They only flip when the rock is forming. As molten rock cools parts of a magnetic, along the Earth's magnetic field, you're able to analyze these rocks and find which way the Earth's magnetic field is running to when they formed. The evidence on the seafloor suggests the Earth's magnetic field has flipped over time, creating a striped effect of magnetism on the ocean floor.